My name is Christian Hearn. I'm at the bottom of that list. Uh, John, um, Matthew Finger uh, was uh, kind enough to return uh, as a graduate student. Uh, he spoke here last year and uh, introduced uh, our open source antenna pattern measurement system. And I'm here predominantly uh, to just give an update on uh, how it's being used and whom we are collaborating with uh, as a result of it. And if uh, all goes well, we will give a, a, a quick demonstration uh, so you can watch uh, what it does. So which way do I want to go here? Plus, no. I might need some help. Which button? Which button do I need to do? No, that's why. The wrong handheld. Thank you. OK, so. Okay, so uh, quickly, um, this program, uh, I'm, I'm a faculty in uh, Weaver State University. It's a small uh, engineering, electrical engineering program, and my focus has been predominantly uh, to increase our measurement and capability for our undergraduates. And uh, this uh, hardware demonstration that we'll conclude with is a result of uh, two uh, programs or to say funded awards from the Utah NASA Space Grant Consortium. I'll give a uh, quick uh, summary of the collaborations, predominantly uh, the Naval Surface Warfare Center, uh, Lucas Eans, who is a regular attendee here. Uh, Keo Mac is a contractor that is located near Ogden. And uh, wireless at VT, I have a colleague uh, from my alma mater who is uh, using a version one of this hardware. And I'll quickly uh, conclude with uh, future directions and uh, future collaborations, hopefully with uh, John Kraft of Analog Devices, whom we met here last year. Okay, a uh, quick uh, background. These are uh, similar to what uh, Matt presented last year, but uh, in summary, it's a low cost, uh, open source, oops, open source antenna pattern measurement system that was based on an IEEE paper uh, that used uh, Linksys routers and pretty much equivalent to Home Depot hardware. Uh, we uh, took that idea, rebuilt it, and had the same problems that they did, and then upgraded with uh, going to uh, software radios, GNU Radio Companion, and we, uh, what was not around when the original paper came out were the uh, 3D printer hardware, namely the synchronous belts and the synchronous gears that are available and uh, ultimately low cost. Uh, also, we have some uh, custom made 3D printing uh, hardware pieces, namely this masthead here that I'll get a picture of in a minute, that uh, have been uh, developed, student designed, and student built uh, in, in our uh, engineering programs. And so there's a good picture of our uh, version two hardware that's uh, identical to this one here. Uh, you can see it's um, a, they're basically driven by uh, stepper motors. Um, this one is a single, uh, this is a single motor control in the azimuth plane and manually controlled in the elevation plane for simplicity. And we use a Arduino with a Arduino as a motor controller for the single stepper motor control. Uh, we're using Hack RF radios for the RF link, and those are a couple of pictures in the middle of the um, SolidWorks designs that were uh, developed in a Weber State. Uh, the picture on the right is the uh, permanent, the one that doesn't go on travel, uh, and I'm basically modified a shop cart and uh, integrated it so uh, and, and kept it in a, what will ultimately be our anechoic And uh, that one, uh, we made a couple of small changes, but all of the hardware is the same as the one we're going to show you in a couple of minutes. Um, just a quick look at the block diagram. We have uh, systems driven by a single PC, and we have uh, two uh, software-defined radios for the RF link. Uh, we have discovered along the way uh, we use uh, AM coherent modulation for our, um, our, our test signal, our source signal. 
which is easily achieved with uh, just tying the two clocks together, and that's sufficient for what uh, for this measurement. And then we have the uh, motor controller side, which is driven, as I mentioned, by an Arduino with a GRBL shield, and we're using um, GRBL 1.1F. We have been for uh, several years, and uh, this block diagram shows both elevation and azimuth control. We only have um, uh, azimuth control, one single stepper motor. Um, that's just a quick um, multi-sim demonstration of AM, uh, a, a coherent AM signal simulation that we currently use for uh, this deployable uh, open uh, source antenna pattern measurement system. Uh, along the way, uh, Matt, who presented last year as an undergraduate and then uh, worked for L3 uh, last semester, and um, I haven't, I'm grateful that I have him back on loan uh, to complete a master's degree, but uh, he started, it actually was a Python 2 uh, version uh, where uh, he began to explore uh, transitioning the software from Python 2 to Python 3, and we are ultimately now on a Python 3.9, and we have, uh, uh, what is the word, been uh, users of GNU Radio um, since uh, the version 3.7, and we're currently on 3.9. Uh, we had, a, I think it was what, a generation 3 uh, Linux that was uh, when Matt finished last December, we were using a version 4.19 Debian. Uh, we've since uh, moved on to Ubuntu because we have a Linux lab and someone, my colleague, uh, Jonathan West, who is very efficient uh, in uh, Linux programming and was a uh, great help in May uh, in finalizing the improvements to the version 2 software. And again, the GRBL is the open source industry standard for uh, industrial control. Um, this is a kind of summary of uh, my colleague Jonathan West's contribution. Um, it basically, one of the, the biggest hangups, and I've heard discussed a couple of times this morning already, was um, the, um, the the sockets. The uh, the original uh, software was, uh, I think, a version of the Linux. Uh, you know, it was a version of Python, and it still used the, the sock, a socket, and we were having big trouble uh, saving our data and in, into a plottable format. Uh, all of that um, is now eliminated in the version of software that we have on a GitHub repository that I will make open after this conference today. Uh, does not uh, use uh, the, the old socket, and it is uh, much more efficient than it had been. Uh, and the other thing that Dr. West uh, was a uh, huge help with was the creating uh, JSON files to uh, make global variables, and uh, you would go in and basically, uh, we don't have it quite menu-driven yet where you're asked for frequencies and number of points, but uh, it's still kind of a batch file format and uh, it's uh, an infinite improvement from what we had before. And uh, again, uh, the GitHub is kind of a new parameter for me. I'm more of an electromagnetics person who is learning Python on the fly, and, uh, but uh, it is definitely the wave of the future, and I have um, the, the collaborators that I will mention on the next slide have uh, at least access to the GitHub, and I will make it open uh, directly. Uh, this is a slide that just shows the uh, mechanical uh, design of the uh, 3D parts that we've been using um, in-house, and almost all of these were designed and built by uh, undergraduate students. I'll shift now to the collaborations. Uh, last spring, uh, or I should say last year at the GRCon 22, uh, we met uh, Lucas Ians, or I should say Lucas Ians met Matt. I was not present at the time. And uh, last May, uh, I delivered a prototype to him. I learned some pretty painful lessons about shipping this on uh, air travel, so uh, I'm still keeping my fingers crossed that everything will behave for the next few minutes. But 
Um, to the best of my knowledge, he has uh, still been using it, and he mentioned to me that he is uh, working on a GUI interface at this point. Um, the most recent uh, collaboration is a contractor, Keomac, that is centered in Virginia, rest in Virginia, but they have a large presence in um, in Layton, Utah, which is just outside the Hill Air Force Base, and uh, we are evaluating um, array, uh, integrating arrays to drone wings, and that's a little picture of a half-scale drone uh, with some uh, patch antennas just for uh, proof of concept uh, demonstration. Uh, the third uh, collaboration is with uh, my colleague uh, Carl Dietrich uh, at, at Wireless at VT, and uh, that's a version one prototype there. Uh, he uh, has a chance for a funded senior project this fall that hopefully we'll be using uh, this system and I'm going to probably deliver one for him so uh, he doesn't have to deal with a wooden sawhorse that looks like it came from Home Depot there. Um, Circling back uh, to uh, Matt Finger, who has uh, returned as a graduate student with a NASA graduate fellowship. Uh, our plan this fall, uh, he just returned two weeks ago, yeah. And uh, our initial plan is he's going to uh, reproduce uh, the, the digital beamformer that John Kraft, another person we met at this conference last year, uh, with the uh, two with the Plutos, and uh, we're looking also at uh, wading into uh, radar systems and radar signal processing. Um, wrapping up uh, the slide part of this, and we'll shift to the demonstration in just a moment. But I would like to acknowledge uh, the Utah NASA Space Grant Consortium that has awarded this effort twice. Uh, Moog Industries uh, donated the absorber that we are uh, using. And uh, certainly, uh, my acknowledging uh, the contributions of my uh, students along the way, uh, Dan Newton and Taylor Hansen and Ren Fisher, and of course, uh, Matt Finger. Um, with that, I think we will uh, give this a go and demonstrate, and if we could get um, this, push the right button, there we go. If we can get, if we can switch to this. And I'll let Matt do the talking. Okay. Perfect. Um, like you said, uh, my name is Matthew Finger. I'm just a graduate student there at Weber State. I'm just going to do a quick demonstration on our uh, machine here. Um, as of right now, it's very terminal-based, kind of bare bones, so that if we want to go back and change anything, we can at any point. Uh, we got a couple of different options. So the first one is the one we'll demonstrate, which is just a fast scan where we sweep all 360 degrees in one uh, quick motion. The other ones are a bit slower. They take about 10 to 15 minutes, so won't be uh, demonstrating the day. But they are the ones where they will go to an angle, read that uh, direction, and then yeah, the fixed direction, and then move an angle, repeat all the way for the 360 degrees. Yep, so we can plot multiple traces or kind of compare it to our fast sweep. Cool. So at the very beginning, it's going to go back to its zero position. So that way it's set every single time and we will get the full 360 degrees. Once it hits the zero position, the transmitting antenna will start transmitting and it will start reading and do the full 360 degree sweep. And as of right now, we are on 2.4 gigahertz because it is very easy to build those antennas by hand and it's a lot easier to test in a campus and student environment. So as of right now, it, the 
uh, receiving hack RF is uh, active as well as our transmitter. We're spinning our 360 degrees. It's getting our data points for our uh, uh, measurement system. Once it hits at 360 degrees, it cuts off the transmitter and the receiver, saves all the data, data points, and sends us back to our zero position. So that way it would be ready for the next scan or if we wanted to do a different antenna. Um, and this one that we're testing right now is a directive Yagi. It's what, four element? So it's, about a, it's a four element Yagi. And we have just kind of a plot there. Let me shift that over. So there's our just raw data points as, that we can see from it. And we will go in here in a second and look at it in our polar version and convert it to DB. So we'll go to our fourth option here to plot our last run. Uh, we'll say GNU. And it will ask us if we want to pull out in dB or versus just raw magnitude. So we'll go plot in dB. And we have our plot. So we can see our frontal lobe is uh, very directive in that very first direction as we're kind of looking down, which you would expect from a Yagi. And then we've got some kind of side lobe action and uh, most likely from some bouncing off of either the ground or the wall here, because of course this isn't an anechoic chamber, so you're not gonna get a 100% perfect result, but you can get a visible demonstration of this Yagi is going to put most of its energy in that direction. All right, thank you. Thank you, Matt. Yeah. So, uh, are there any questions? I guess I just want to mention, um, I want to thank the GNU Radio Companion community and this conference that's definitely um, and broadened our horizons and we've made some very valuable contacts and definitely has uh, breathed some oxygen into uh, my uh, research and scholarship efforts and hopefully a building uh, EM and antenna program at, our, at Weber State University. So any questions? Yes, sir. Oh, probably need a microphone. No, I'm right here. Hi, um, this is very cool. Uh, I actually, so I'm a grad student up at Penn State and we have an anechoic chamber and I had to completely rewrite our software because it was terrible. And so I've done a GUI for doing pattern measurements. Would love to talk. Sure. Um, did you explain if you had a way to do any kind of calibration, calibrated measurements, like realized gain? Right now, I'm just promoting this as a relative measurement, okay, a okay. student tool. We're, um, they, we're in a brand new building, and they've given me space for a chamber. It's not outfitted yet, but um, everything the past, uh, th this past morning and afternoon, I recognize that calibration is something both in where Matt's going in the future and where we are now is something that we want to have to pursue. But right now, it was really just a student uh, tool, hand, you know, to give them an access, the idea that uh, students who are better at software can get introduced to antennas. Myself, an antenna person, can actually get something that works uh, using uh, these open source tools. But uh, the the accuracy is not there yet, so uh, I probably need to talk to you. Um, no. Yeah, I would love to chat. I mean, still very cool to be able to get somebody, a student in their backyard, taking a pattern measurement of some coat hanger that they made. That's very, very cool. I agree. Thank you. We can we can have more questions. We're a bit over time, but we don't have a talk immediate afterwards. Was there? Oh no, you won. No. Okay. Well, I I also like the fact that you you know have like this completely open source. Said I, I just I just love that. I just wanted to make it's not a question. I just wanted to say, <laughs> well, I have the mic that I also think this is pretty. There's cool. A lot to keep track of, and um, you know, Matt did a lion's share of the work of bringing that. Was it from Python two to Python three, and upgrading the um, GNU Radio Companion at the same time? But uh, he did a great job. Well, I think for that he deserves a round of applause as, as a speaker. And Thank you.